I'm Tyrone Bowman. This is Tyrone Bowman Tonight. The topic of discussion, the verdict, and the sentencing of WNBA star Brittany Griner. There's a lengthy video on this evening because I'm going to take my time with this particular story and I want to be sure that I cover this in its entirety. So this video will be longer than the other videos. So let's get down to the main point of the story that was recorded by USA Today. Brittany Griner sentenced to nine years on drug charges in Russia. What happens next? Well, throughout the article, I'll be talking about the Brittany Griner timeline in the events leading up to the WNBA star's conviction in Russia. Also, I'll be talking about dangerous but necessary as the U.S. negotiates a scary Brittany Griner swap with Russia. Also, I'll be talking about Griner's cannibal use, norming in America when Russia's drug laws are draconian. Quote, the trial of Brittany Griner ended Thursday with the WNBA star expressing remorse for accidentally bringing bait cartridges containing cannabis with her when she flew to Moscow. Hours later, a judge sentenced her to nine years in prison, and Griner headed back to the pre-trial detention facility where she had been held since her arrest at the airport. In mid-February, she'll stay there. She'll stay there for now. Sometime in the coming weeks, Brittany Griner will temporarily disappear while on her way to a female only penal colony. That is the reality for a foreigner in Russia's legal system, leaving their families worried and in the dark. The journey to remote Russia won't happen immediately to allow for any appeals process. David Wheeling told USA Today, his brother Paul Wheeling is a former United States Marine who was arrested in Russia in 2018 and sentenced to 16 years on espionage charges. The U.S. says are untrue. Greiner and Paul Wheeling are considered wrongfully detained by the U.S. government, and the State Department has offered Russia a substantial offer for their returns. The time between the date of conviction and transport is usually about one month, David Wheeling said. So she'll get on the prison train and she'll be on there a couple of weeks until she gets where she's going, he said. In Paul Wheeling's case, he was convicted at the end of June. Transported in early August, he was first taken to a transition camp in Mordovia, almost like a quarantine, David Wheeling said. Then he just disappeared, David Wheeling said. During transport, Griner will be placed in a small windless rail car with almost no idea where she'll be taken. Her family and supporters won't have much of a better idea. The Russian government is supposed to inform family members that prisoners are changing locations. They don't seem too worried about that if you're not Russian, David Willen said. For a couple of days, we didn't have any idea where he'd gone or where he would be going to. The Willings eventually learned he was going to a colony called IK-17. He was on the train for weeks. No calls, no mail, nothing. There's no communication, David Willings said. They disappear off the face of the earth and they reappear when they're supposed to be in a certain sense. David Willing believes someone for the department, uh, David Willing believes someone from the depleted U.S. Embassy staff in Moscow could reach out to the Federal Penitentiary Service, but that would be mostly useless exercise. Most penal colonies were constructed before 1970, are overcrowded and can be dangerous, David Willing said. The Russian mob controls various colonies which can be better than guard-run penitentiaries where torture and other abuses are common. Regardless problems with running water and heating, 
uh, are common, according to the Center for Eastern Studies. Now Brandon's camp will play the waiting game, the same on the Willing family has played for almost four years. Listen to this. Now Grinders Camp will play the waiting game. The same one the Willing family has played for almost four years now. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Bilkin's public admission that the United States made a substantial offer to Russia in June caught David Willing off guard. But since the announcement last week, he and his family have settled back into patience mode. The conclusion of the Grinder case should move negotiations to the next stage, experts say. We have seen, based on the Russian response, that they view the substantial proposal made in June as a first offer, and that there's obviously some more to have as far as discussions go. Willian said, I think we've got many months before we see anything actually happen. This video will continue in a few moments. Never surrender, never quit.